question of the day, how does one get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. I, I take it you've heard this one. So, if one wants to do well at something, one has to practice it. Growing up in Baltimore, we didn't have a car. And when I went off to college in North Carolina, my friends insisted that I should get a driver's license, even though I didn't have a car. So I did the written test, I did really well, studied my book really well, passed. So I had my, my learner's permit for a bit. My friend Matt had to teach me how to drive and we practiced in the school's parking lot in college. And well, we'll continue to pray for his recovery from, from all that stress. And so I went to go take the test. I was very excited, a little nervous. And I, I got in the car and was going through the test and at the end of it, the DMV official said, you didn't pass. You gotta practice more. So, I, I waited about a month or two, did a little more practicing, and I went back to the same DMV office. And guess who was there? Again. So I felt a little more confident this time. And then, of course, we go through a construction zone. And of course, kids started running across the street and an ambulance came by. It wasn't good. <laughs> and you know what? So you didn't make it this time. Go ahead and try again later. I got good news. I did pass the third time. Now, what are you saying? What's, this, what's the point of the story is that I didn't become a good driver unless I practiced. And that's what we're hearing from James. We can say we have one's faith, one has faith, but if we don't practice it, do we really have faith? Now, it's not to say that, you know, if one has, uh, you know, if one does all these X, Y, and Z, you're immediately going to have faith. I mean, just because you throw out some cans in the food drive and, you know, go to see some, go to see some folks in the nursing home that you immediately have faith. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. For things would be a lot easier for all of us. But it takes a continual road and journey that is at times difficult. And Jesus is, you know, teaching the disciples, here's, here's the way of faith. And you said, you know who I am. And Peter's like, you are the son of God. Congratulations, Peter's got the gold star for the day. Peter's the first one who figures out, this has got to be God. Then Jesus says, oh, by the way, I'm going to have to suffer and die. And this shocks Peter. This shocks Peter. This is God. He's not going to have to go through this. How could the faith be that difficult? How could things be so difficult for you, God? And that's when Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Now, it's not trying to make an insult to Peter because he wasn't, it wasn't Jesus' good day here. But Jesus is telling Peter, it's not going to be easy. Following me is not going to be easy. As you know, each and every one of you, as you go through your life, there's challenges. Just because one believes there is God does not take cancer out of your life. Just because one believes in God means that you're always going to be able to find a parking spot. Just because one believes in God and starts going to church regularly doesn't mean it's always going to be sunshine and lollipops every day. Our faith is not a trip to Disneyland. Boy, it would be nice to, to be a trip to Disneyland. But still, even if you go to Disneyland, there's still parking, high, high prices, and lots of lines. So not even a trip to Disneyland is a trip to Disneyland. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, God is calling each and every one of you to grow in one's faith and to share that faith. It is not enough for us to simply say, oh, I believe in God and I go to church. That's enough. God is calling each and one of us to be a part of the faith and to share it with others. How? By visiting the sick. By feeding the hungry. God is calling each and every one of you to live out one's faith. 
you've probably heard it said a thousand times that you may be the only gospel someone experiences. You may be the first encounter for people of Jesus Christ. What is that gospel going to look like? I see Father Christopher, that's a lot of pressure on me. Well, guess what? We get a little hope. You know, we hear in the first reading that God says, look, no matter what, I'm going to be with you. I am going to give you grace through these challenges. God's not just to stick us out there and abandon us. It's like, here's the keys. Good luck. Let me know how the driving goes. God is accompanying us. Like my friend taught me how to drive. God is here to accompany us in our faith journey. And we have plenty of people to help us. And today we celebrate that. The Catechetical Sunday, we celebrate those people who are saying, Yes, Lord, I'm going to respond to that by helping other people. And I'm going to share my faith and journey with other people. And I'm sure like some of you are like, Brother Christopher, that's for some special people. That's not for me. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You know, one thing I... I started, after graduating from college, I went to Louisiana and started teaching. My first year, oh my, the spitballs were numerous. The parent conference was, were out the door. It seemed like I was a really popular teacher, I guess. But somehow I made it through. And it's not that anything I did of my own. Just ask my former students. It was not my own efforts. It was through God's grace. And some of you have the opportunity that God is calling you into a relationship. And not to say that it's going to be easy, but He's going to give you the grace that is necessary. My brothers and sisters in Christ, sometimes we sit around waiting for someone else to do something. I sure wish that, oh, the church would do more in this area. I, you know, I really wish the church really, I really wish people sang more. I really wish the church would do more for the poor. My brothers and sisters in Christ, you are the church. You are disciples of Jesus Christ and you are being called. And we may feel inadequate just as Peter feels inadequate. But God gives him the grace. We know the end of the story. You know, the the person that Jesus rebukes as Satan, guess what? He's, he's going to be in charge of the ship when the captain's away. And somehow God is able to do that. How much more can God do with you? You know, as someone, I remember my first few weeks of teaching, I felt like I was ready to quit. And my teachers, my fellow teacher says, it's all right, it's going to be going to work out. And you know what I did? The first thing I did, I called my father. I said, Dad, I'm so sorry for putting you through all of my childhood. But I guess my father had grace, because it worked out all right, I guess. So much more God is going to work in your lives with grace. And to acknowledge what gifts and talents you might have, and to be willing to share that with others. Because our faith is not just about saying, I have faith. It is being willing to take that leap of faith. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this week you have plenty of opportunities to be a gospel message to somebody. You know the parables. You know the sayings. I know you're like, Father Christopher, we heard this every single week. Please stop being so repetitive. But, you know, it took me three times to get my driver's license. You know, God has tremendous mercy on us and has faith. So if I can get my driver's license, folks, you can do a whole lot more. <laughs>